I'm Sunny Stock, and uh, some people call me Reverend Sunny Stock, and it is something that happens to you. It's a, it becomes a part of your name when you get ordained. And I have to tell you that uh, a lot of people say that uh, it's really good for you to be a pastor because then you only have to work an hour on a Sunday morning. <laughs> I have two churches that are yoked together, which means I work two hours on a Sunday morning. <laughs> now, usually what I say when someone says that to me is, well, that's true, but really the only reason I became a pastor is for the power and the money. <laughs> all of those things, <laughs> all of those things are not true. But I have to tell you that when uh, my son-in-law, when he first became a, a member of our family, he took me aside and he said, you have to tell me, what is it that you need an office for? Uh, so it's vastly under, misunderstood what, what uh, pastors do, and I'll, and I'll talk to you a little bit about that. First about the schooling is uh, there is just so much, um, there's so many different uh, denominations which are really worship traditions because in this room at least it looks like we're, uh, it, I'm really generalizing, I'm assuming we're Christian based folks and, uh, and there's just so, so many, many different worship traditions within the, the Christian faith and, uh, but some college has to happen. Uh, somewhere along uh, the way. If you're uh, in, a, in a real liturgical tradition, you're, uh, you uh, are going to have to have a, an undergraduate degree. And when I heard uh, you know, uh, someone say that uh, you can't really do so much with a four-year psychology degree, well, that's true, but you can go on to seminary. <laughs> it's, a really good, it's a really good foundation. It's a good undergraduate degree for seminary. But depending on what your worship tradition is, uh, you can go to Bible college. Uh, you can, uh, there, there's different ways to get training. Uh, also, there's training within many worship traditions within their actual uh, hierarchy of their churches. And, uh, and that equips people. Now, here's the deal, though. Uh, being a female, uh, and I know it's really going to be hard for some of you to wrap your brain around this. And if, and if you're as old as I am, this will not seem so odd to you. But there are schools in this country that do not accept women into the pastoral training programs, even yet. Uh, so uh, don't be discouraged when you find out that sort of thing. If you would feel led to go into the ministry, that just means that God doesn't want you to go to that particular institution. It doesn't necessarily mean that God's not calling you to the ministry. But it's an interesting thing in that you don't really aspire to become a pastor. In fact, if you understand anything about being a pastor at all, you run the other way. But anyway, <laughs> uh, it's something that God calls you to do. Uh, you have a great sense uh, that that is what you want to do. And that's not just for women, that's for men as well. When I ended up in seminary, which I have to tell you the Lord had to drag me kicking and screaming, um, the, um, the one thing that, that really stuck out in my mind is that God does not call every woman to be a pastor. Uh, but what we have to understand is that God does not call every man to be a pastor either. Uh, it, so, it, so it's not a gender issue. Uh, it's definitely um, a, a spiritual thing that happens. Um, you know, you might aspire, uh, you know, you might uh, really think that law would be a good profession. You know, you work really hard in law, you make a, a big difference in law, you change the world uh, with law. Um, but, but with being a pastor, it, it's a little bit different in that um, even though I, I'm assuming lawyers are, work very, they, they, they work like not, they don't have a 40 hour work week, right? I mean, my son-in-law is a lawyer, that's how come I pick law. Um, but, but there is a time when they can disengage. As a pastor, here's the deal, there's really no time that you can disengage. Uh, it is it is God calling you to live sacrificially. And so when you come to a point, and, and, not, and, and not a lot of people do this when they're young, because when you're young, you know, you're, you're aspiring to owe so much more in life and, and making, and, and making uh, your mark, so to speak. Uh, when you get called to, to the ministry, it's when you have decided to decrease. Uh, it's not so you are not important. What is important is what the Lord will do through you. And, you know, you have to be at a place where you are very confident with being diminished. Not everyone is there. And that's okay. That just means the Lord is not calling you to be a pastor. But if you have a great sense of who you are in the Lord, 
then you know what? Really, if anybody remembers your name, who cares? Uh, you know, and so that's living sacrificially, and that is being diminished. And, and very much in, in the pastorate, and I'm not saying there aren't lots of pastors out there that, that are very, very wonderful people that really like their name remembered, but the true vocation of pastor is to live sacrificially and to be diminished. And so, so I just encourage you all to, um, to remember that being a pastor, with being a pastor, uh, there is an internal call, you know in your heart, oh my goodness, I think this is something that the Lord would have me do. But then also there's an external call. And with the external call is other people start recognizing, you know what, you know what I think you need to do? And then you need to really do some soul searching.